brings him out. Richards in motion back toward the ball. Straight ahead is Walter Payton. Robin Earl and the linebacker David Lewis having a little personal shoving battle going on. Payton got about three, maybe four. Let's see where they spotted on forward progress. We'll call it a three-yard gain, second and seven. The ball at the 22-yard line of Tampa Bay. Robin Earl, number 39, in the fullback position with Payton. Earl coming off a foot injury. Miami has scored on a field goal by Ova Von Schaman to close the margin to six in that game. 2.35 to play in the fourth blitz. quarter. Here comes the blitz, and he's sacked by Cotney. The safety coming from outside right. The Buccaneers saved it for when they needed it. He got in up at the top of your screen there. You could see Golden Richards spotted him, but there was nothing he could do about it. And here comes Cotney, and there was nobody to pick him up and block. It was almost impossible for an interior lineman, as you saw Noah Jackson, in desperation trying to come back and help out. The blitz, safety blitz, worked for Tampa, and it has put the Bears in a third and about 17-18 situation. That's the first Buccaneer sack of the day. Each team has had one. Lada out, Cobb in, in motion Richards for the Bears. Behind the ball, picked up by Cotney, and some kind of a miscount. Flags everywhere. Evans pulled back. The Buccaneers followed him back, and so we must assume the infraction will be against Chicago. He came back without the ball. Full start. Quarterback came out without the ball. That is the second miscue between Neal and Evans. Teams cannot afford that. Latta comes in, and the fullback, Earl, comes out. Third right. down and long. Look at this. Philadelphia 17, Pittsburgh 14. You mentioned Greg Latta. That's a, is that, uh, oh, we have a final here. Minnesota 13, Detroit 3. 10. No, 10, I'm right. sorry. 13 to 10. Vikings keeping their hopes alive at the Central Division. Third down, very long. Scott comes wide right. Lone setback is Peyton. Evans for Peyton, complete. Flag down in the backfield. Peyton still going. Picked up about 13 yards, depending on how they're going to spot it back outside the 30-yard line. Leroy Selman put the pass rush from behind Vince Evans. He was trying to get there, did not get there in time. It's going to be a penalty against Chicago. Watch Selman. He's the defensive right end. There's Ted Albrook, number 64, blocking on him. Selman gets around and comes just too late as Evans hits Peyton. And he bobbled the ball, but it looked like he kept control, got up. Interesting call there yes. because he looked like he should have been able to continue to run. He was yes. not down by a Buccaneer, but they spotted the ball at that point. However, it really doesn't matter because of the penalty upcoming against the Bears anyway. Boy, this drive is going the other way for the Chicago Bears. Holding number 64, offense, repeat third down. They called it on Ted Albrecht on the blocking on Selman. When Selman got by him, apparently he figured he reached and grabbed. This watch at the top of your screen, as I said, the left tackle, 64, blocking on 63. Their arms are a little bit tangled right there, and that's where he's calling him for pulling him back. And there was the penalty. All right, it is third down. Bears way back out now near midfield. Evans intercepted. Mark Washington. It was tipped by the linebacker, Lewis, and then picked off by Mark Washington at the 25-yard line of Tampa Bay. And it looks like another flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. Here's the play again as the ball was deflected up and over James Scott, and then came the interception. And they call a penalty against Tampa Bay on this play. It stepped off five yards. Scott made the tackle. Offside, number oh. 60, defense, repeat third down. Now a break for the Bears there. Wally Chambers, the former Bear, offside. Ball advanced now to the 42-yard line of Tampa Bay. Five defensive backs in for the Bucks. A 
obvious passing situation. Wide right comes James Scott. Slot formation left. Everybody into the pattern. Evans, too high for James Scott, who took quite a hit from Jarris White. Downfield at the 25. And it'll bring up fourth down. Chicago will have to punt. Richard Todd would appear to have cemented a Jets victory over the unbeaten Dolphins. A 71-yard touchdown pass to Speedy Wesley Walker, 33 to 20, 210 remaining in the fourth quarter. Baseball scores. Pittsburgh leading the Cubs 3-2, bottom of the seventh. Phillies lead Montreal 2-0, top of the seventh. Parsons angled punt. Good bounce down by Schubert at the one-yard line. Steve Schubert fielding that high bounce at the one-yard line. And Tampa Bay will start from there with 12-12 remaining. Here in the third period, the Buccaneers lead 10-3. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris at Soldier Field. We've got a close football game going here. The Buccaneers starting from their one-yard line following a good punt by Parsons and an alert play by Steve Schubert downing it on one bounce at the one-yard line. Jerry Myers coming in defensively for the Chicago Bears. Number 74. And see if they going to bring Hartenstein, number 73, out. The Bucks have Johnny Davis, number 38, in at running back with Ricky Bell. First time he's been in today, and there seems to be some kind of confusion here. Now they're coming back upfield. What is happening here? Who downed the punt, had been out of bounds, oh. returned, and was the first man to touch the ball. That is a five-yard penalty, re-kick. Well, how about that? Steve Schubert apparently stepped out of bounds on his way downfield, came in and touched the ball, and that's a no-no. You have to stay in the field of play. That's the first time I've seen that called uh, on passes. Now, a pass receiver, if he goes down out of bounds, and comes back in, but I, would, I can see that the rule applies, but why so late on the call? Well, it took him a long time. We uh, got in a couple of commercials while they were making up their minds out there. Everybody was ready to play from the one-yard line. Now Art McNally, the league supervisor of officials, is in attendance here today. And uh, no doubt uh, that is uh, who's on the other end of that line with Gordon McCarter. He's not talking to Mayor Jane Byrne, I can guarantee you that. No, that was a very much of a delayed call. So obviously if we go against uh, the Bears, we'll have to punt once again from five yards further back. But this... The change in yardage is dramatic. I mean, they would be first and 10 on their own one. Well, in a seven point ball game, uh, yes. my goodness, uh, you know, that's a very big play. Anything can happen at the one yard line. Uh, they could uh, come up with the ball down there and been in uh, at least great field position. The NBA on CBS uh, begins with our special Friday night coverage, 1130 Eastern time, October 12th. And you will see the Los Angeles Lakers introducing Magic Johnson against the San Diego Clippers. Many think with Bill Walton, a serious contender for the NBA title. The only thing I can think of is that one of the officials got to thinking about it, you know, and said, hey, I saw him go out of bounds. He was the first man and said, hey, that should have been a penalty. And rather than let it go, decided he better correct the situation, even though it would be very unpopular here in Chicago. Procedure, the man who downed the punt had first gone out of bounds, came back in, and was the first man to touch the kick. That is illegal. It's five yards, still fourth down. Five-yard penalty against the Bears. Parsons will punt again. He's standing at his own 38-yard line. Gordon McCarter explaining it. And as you can see, uh, not for the satisfaction of Bears fans here at Silver Field. Parsons will try again for the perfect punt. Danny Reese cancels that idea at the 10-yard line. Reese over the 20 to the 23. Well, that is quite a difference in that play, for sure. Lenny Wallershot put the tackle on Reese. It is now final. Pittsburgh falls from the rank of the unbeatens, 17 to 14. Buffalo whipping Baltimore now, 21 to 6 in the third period. Next week, the Bears are at Buffalo. Johnny and I will be there to bring uh, parts of the country that game. 
The Eagles are now four and one in their division. That's not bad. That's a good football team, and Dick Vermeil has done an outstanding job taking over as head coach there. Doug Williams, 10 for 22, 123 yards. First down, Buccaneer. Eckwood in motion. Bell met by the linebacker, Hicks, number 54. Got a couple. Four-year man from Illinois, Tom Hicks, bothered with injuries the past couple of years, but he can play in the middle. Pittsburgh Pirates have gone in front of the Cubs five to two top of the eighth trying to clinch their division championship the Phillies lead the Expos two nothing in the top of the ninth so the Expos batting uh, with one more time at bat at home before their season will apparently be over Hampton comes out for the Bears Hart is in at left defensive end number 53 Spivey is in on the left corner number 47 second and eight Williams to throw. Sideliner complete to Hagens. And he has a first down at the 35 yard line. Well, that ball went like a shot, didn't it? Boy, he can throw. He is impressive. The Bears using the normal four man rush. Williams just goes back, the down and the out. Boom, right in the bread basket, out of bounds, first down. That's the way football is supposed to be played. Here's the ground level action. As Williams gets back in the pocket pretty quickly, just like Vince Evans does, and he watches, and he saw that he did a good job. Out of the eye, first down, Tampa, Eckwood. Number 43, good defensive play. Splitting through the blocking on the right side. Gary Fensick, who is so good against the run, coming up from a safety position. He did a great job. He just came on and challenged Roberts, the pulling guard, and still made the tackle. Good play by Gary Fensick. No game, second and 10. Gordon Jones comes in, number 84, with the play from John McKay. Jones and Hagen's the wide receiver. They still haven't thrown the Giles that much, and he's been open a few times. Good opportunity here. Second and oh. ten. Some motion, and it was by Giles. He throws to Jones, but that play will go for not flags everywhere. It appeared to be Giles moving before the ball. I shouldn't have mentioned his name. <laughs> He has been blocking very well for Tampa Bay, and he's a tight end who can get down the field. This time he got down the field a little too quickly, and it cost his team. Procedure penalty signaled against the Buccaneers. 10-29 to go in the third period. There is Giles, number 88. The two of them actually Ball move. start, number 61, offense, second down. So there were a lot of that, that moved at the same time, and there was obviously some confusion on the snap. Second down, 15 to go. Ball at the 30-yard line for Tampa Bay. They lead 10-3. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris bringing you the action on a beautiful day in Chicago. Williams wants to throw. He's got lots of time. The flag is down. Mm -hmm. uh, incomplete pass intended for Giles. Had one hand on the ball. Couldn't haul it in. Ball was sailing a little. They really had Giles covered this time, and Williams had to wait and wait and wait, and then you, eventually your linemen are going to hold. As he came down, curved around the linebacker, Tom Hicks, who was just looking at the man, and there he is right there, and the pass is a little bit high. At, but what caused the holding penalty was having to hold your block so long, eventually somebody's going to get called. So they'll mark off some more yardage, another 10. Second down at 25. Holding. Now. Number 75, offense. Repeat second down. Dave Revis, the left tackle, guilty of the holding. I'd say we have about 58,000 fans here in Soldier Field with a new artificial surface and some new stands. Certainly not a new stadium, but not bad either. High formation for the Bucks. Eckwood nearly collided with his quarterback Williams on the exchange, and that made it a somewhat slow start. He got only three or four yards at the most. Hampton number 99 and the linebacker Muckensturm number 58 put the stop on him. 
Now we have a third down and very long situation. So John McKay's brain, I'm sure, is churning and churning. He sends in the play. What do they do? To get the first down, you got a long ways to go. Morris Owens brought the play in, and he comes wide left. Higgins wide right. Giles moves over to make the strong side left. Flag down again, and play call before Williams throws it anyway, but it's all over, and so <laughs> Plank gives uh, Higgins a little extra shot. Well, you know, there's a situation where Williams shouldn't have thrown the ball. He wound up getting his own man popped there, and you could say Plank shouldn't have hit him because the play was over. Illegal but formation. A tackle was uncovered on the first set. Actually, that was a love tap for Doug Plank. Yes, it was. <laughs> a very <laughs> gentle hello for a hard-hitting safety man, Doug Plank. Illegal formation, the call, and that must have occurred when they moved the tight end, Giles, over to make the strong side on the left. Williams uh, questioning what happened on the play. So Illegal formation. The tackle was not covered by an eligible receiver on the first set. Well, all right. What did he say? The tackle wasn't covered by an eligible receiver. That means that there was not a wide receiver over there on that right side after they had taken Giles out of there. Third down and 30. Heck was. Not much. I think Coach McKay was prepared to punt. I think he said, hey, listen, we've tried to get a playoff for five minutes here. We <laughs> might as well just run the ball and punt and get it over with. I'd like to see him punt on third down there just to make that point stronger. He had a great quote. He said, Peyton's so fast he can cut on a dime and leave you two quarters change. <laughs> he has some great quotes. Do you think he was happy last week when they beat the Rams on television and oh, back boy. in L.A. they were watching? Tom Blanchard into punt standing at his own 10-yard line. The deep man is Steve Schubert, number 85, awaiting the punt at the 34. Mm. Blanchard's punt coming down at the right at the 34. Schubert met by a sea of white jerseys. The flag is down. He made a good return through traffic over the 40 to the 43. Let's see what the call is. Rick Burns, rookie running back, made the tackle on him. But the flag down uh, could well be a, a clip against Chicago. 40-yard punt for Blanchard. Well, the Dolphins didn't quit down there. Greasy passed to Nat Moore for a touchdown of, from six yards out. But the Jets hung on to win it 33-27. to 27. Big win for the Jets. And Miami no longer unbeaten. The Bears had good field position, but now they have uh, not so hot field position. Personal foul, clipping number 37 receivers during the return. First down. Willie McClendon, rookie running back for the Bears, caught for clipping. Number 37, you got to look at it right there as they, he was falling down there after the clip, but right now we have it uh, still. Tampa 10, Chicago 3. Well, next week on the Sports Spec, uh, looks like another entertaining afternoon of sports competition. The Pacific Invitational Gymnastics Championship. You'll see Kirk Thomas of the U.S. against some of the best from around the world, including a Chinese team and the world's strongest men. They'll be lifting cars and tossing cabers and flexing muscles and having all kinds of fun. First down for the Chicago Bears. At their own 25, Robin Earl going straight ahead. Got a couple, maybe three. Stacked up by the middle of that defense. Leroy Selman, number 63, the right defensive end. The man to stop him. As you see, Neil Armstrong sent Greg Latta in with the play. The Bears have won seven straight games here at home at Soldier Field, which is pretty good percentage. They're much tougher at home. Five, uh, the last five regular season and a couple of preseason? Yes. Well, they're still very much in this ball game. There's lots of time remaining. 8.09, third period. They trail by only a touchdown. Second and about eight. Evans up the middle for Latta. Can't hold on. Incomplete. Jared White nearly ticked it off on the deflection. Pass a little high. Latta couldn't quite pull it in. 
And Vince Evans, they, they blitzed one linebacker up at the top of your screen, but Latta went right down the middle of the field, and it was there. The pass was there, and he found the slot, but he couldn't quite hang on to it. And there's Jarris White almost with an interception for Tampa Bay. Notice all those Buccaneers around there, five white jerseys and one dark one. Buffalo Bills leading Baltimore 21 to 6 in the third period. Our latest score from there. There have been 12 penalties in this game, and here in the third period, it has really taken the rhythm and the tempo out of this football game. Both teams would like to get it back. Evans on second down, and that's complete to Peyton out of the backfield. He's got three bucks waiting for him, but he has the first down yardage with a good effort, typical Peyton effort. Cotney and Richard Wood stopped him, but not before he got the first down. Well, he sneaked out of there and got underneath the linebackers who were dropping down for their coverage. That's what the Rams did against Tampa Bay last week, but uh, still only garnered 97 yards uh, on rushing. There you see Peyton as he sneaked out, just came across the middle, and Evans was waiting for him. It was a planned play, and there are the linebackers and the defensive backs way downfield as finally a host of tacklers come up, including Curtis Jordan, number 25, who was in on that situation. First down, Chicago. Their own 37. Swing pass to the screen out there, and it's James Scott on a flanker screen, but it was broken up neatly by the right side of the Tampa Bay defense. Richard Wood was there. So was the cornerback, Washington. And there is just the wide receiver screen. He went down a couple of steps, came back. The line comes out in a hurry, but not too much yardage. Boy, look at that block by Noah Jackson. He came across. That's 270 pounds. He said, I got you. A gain of about two on the play. There's a later score on that Buffalo Baltimore game. The Bills opening it to 28 to 6 in the third period. Scott goes wide left. Golden Richards wide right. Richards hasn't had a pass thrown to him yet. Three man rush. Evans going deep for Scott. He's one on one with Washington. Just overthrown. Well, that ball landed on about the, what, the five yard line, the 10 or the five, and he threw it from his own 30. So they could 65 yards at least in the air. They could Cedric Brown. Well, no, Washington, I think, was the man step for step with him there. And then Cedric Brown coming back to help. But it was really a one on one situation. The Buccaneers are not putting that much pressure on Vince Evans with a three man rush. And that is why he's getting time to throw the ball, throw downfield. And uh, he has not been pressured all that much. We mentioned the penalties earlier, John, just to give the fans an idea of what effect they've had. Tampa's taken seven for 55 yards, the Bears five for 50 yards, and as we pointed out, most of them occurring here in the third period. The one time they got to Vince was when they put that safety blitz on. Third down. Let's see if the Bears can keep their drive alive, trying to get out of their own zone. Evans oh. scrambles out of there. Vince Evans, good individual effort, got back near the line of scrimmage. Wally Chambers, the man to put the stop on him, help from Richard Wood. He got about a yard, but it brings up fourth down. Let's take a look and see how many men they brought. Just three to begin with. See, a three-man rush, and they figure they can get somebody through, get enough pressure on him to force him to run, and that time they did, as the big three was after him, but he got away from uh, Kohler, and eventually Wally Chambers number 60 tripped him up and here's the punt. Parsons punt good one backing up Danny Reese to the five yard line. Reese has got some room running hard the flag is down he's over the 20 to the 21 yard line and likely a clip coming up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers nullifying a fine return by Reese. I think it was number 33 Mark Cotney he threw a block which wasn't necessarily a clip but you can't hit anybody low on a return that's a new rule as you know and they're going to get him for that so Tampa Bay is going to have bad field position 52 yard punt by Parsons personal foul blocking low during the return you got it Johnny you cannot block below the waist under new rules in all kicking situations and that's a, a safety decision and a good one by the league and sometimes it's hard for the players in the heat of battle to they're so used to it's been that way for so many years you could if you could cut a guy on a legal block it was legal now you have to go away from your instinct and not do it and sometimes you forget what the situation is because you can do it on normal scrimmage plays blocking low by the receivers 
during the return. First down. What? Seattle leading Kansas City three to nothing in the first period. And an Efren Herrera field goal. And we've got a timeout on the field with 527 remaining in the third period. The Buccaneers lead the Bears 10 to 3. They have a first down at their five. New Orleans has gone in front of the Giants 24 to 14. The Giants have their rookie quarterback Phil Sims in action in that game. First down, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They lead 10 to 3. In motion is Morris Owen. First down pass from his end zone is blocked by Hampton. Hampton got a hand on that. The big guy, the rookie from Arkansas, 6'5", 256 pounder. Hampton, that's two for him. He's number 99. He's being, being blocked by number 73, Hannah. Now, you can see right here, he spots Williams, times his leap perfectly, and knocks it down. Good play. play. Really good play. He was blocked well by Hannah. Still made the big defensive play. And he's only 20 years old. 20. And they've got another fine rookie defensive lineman, Al Harris. Their first two picks in the draft, and Harris injured as a knee injury, but they expect him back before the season's out. Ricky Bell. Bell pulls his way over the five-yard line. Picked up maybe a yard, yard and a half at most. You can kind of sense the feeling of the momentum of this game is changing. The Bear defense has come alive as you look at this final score. Cleveland goes down the tubes as far as being undefeated. It was Houston 31, Cleveland 10. Pittsburgh, another unbeaten, has already lost. It's now final in New Orleans. The Saints 24, the Giants 14. The Giants are winless. Cincinnati leading Dallas 3-0 first period. Chris Carr field goal. Third down, about nine. Five defensive backs in the passing situation for the Bears. Deep sideline, out of bounds. Hagan was the intended receiver, but Williams just chucked that out because there were two men there on Isaac Hagan. And so the Bears defensively playing very soundly throughout the afternoon. Really, only the one big error on the touchdown run. The long 61-yard run by Eckwood. Otherwise, they have uh, shut down Tampa. Now you're going to see a pretty good field position by the Bears because Blanchard's kicking against the wind. Standing near the end line. Beat Manny Schubert. Waiting for it at the 45 of Tampa Bay. Blanchard. Punt drops at the 38. Schubert comes straight ahead. He's met by number 51. That is... Dean and Napsig, a reserve linebacker, but he made a good return, and the Bears have good field position. They'll spot the ball at the 32-yard line of Tampa Bay, and so the Bears have a great opportunity here. They're down by a touchdown. John McKay wearing a white hat on the Buccaneers' sideline. Vince Evans brings him out of the eye. Ricky Watts, rookie wide receiver, is in number 80 for the Bears. He's in motion behind the ball. Straight ahead is Robin Earl. Earl dives through a tackler, Bill Fuller, over the 30 to the 27-yard line. The hopes of the Montreal Expos for a division championship are all over. They were defeated by the Phillies 2 to nothing. The Pirates have won that division championship. They are leading the Cubs 5-3 in the eighth inning. Actually, if the Pirates happen to blow that game, then Montreal would still be in it if they win both games tomorrow. See? Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I studied right. that this we morning got, when I got up good, and read the Johnny. paper. I've got some fat information here, and you're <laughs> on the spot. Second and six. Walter Payton trying the right side. Got to about the 25, really stacked up. Kohler, the first man to hit him. Cotney coming up from safety. It'll be third down and about five. So this is a key bay play for the Chicago Bears because they've had good field position. They have a third down and about five. And if they don't get the first down this time, to give Tampa a little bit of inspiration, you might say, because Tampa's offense has not done anything this year. The defense has kept them in, I mean, this second half. Greg Latta brought the play in. Evans rolling. He's going to run it, and he does not have it. He's out of bounds at the 25-yard line, and the Buccaneers have held. 
So the good field position for the Bears following Blanchard's punt. Good defensive work by the Bears. Didn't help now. Is there a flag down again? No, they're going to try it for the field goal. All right, fourth down. That's a 25. It's going to be about a 42-yard uh, field goal. Pittsburgh has defeated the Cubs 5-3, to three, and that does mean that the Cubs You got it. You got it. <laughs> Thomas from the 32-yard line, a 42-yard try, and it is good. Bob Thomas, 42-yard field goal. And so the score, the Buccaneers 10, the Chicago Bears 6. Bob Thomas banks one off the upright from 42 yards out, so the Bears did not come up empty. The Bucks stopped them from going in for the touchdown, but Thomas got the field goal. It's now a four-point game. Thomas's kickoff taken by Ragsdale at the five. Ragsdale threw the wedge over the 25 to about the 28-yard line, piled up by number 74, Jerry Myers, putting the stop on him. Help from the linebacker, Muckenstern. Let's see that field goal again, Johnny. We've had a one that was stopped when O'Donohue at the upright. This one got the better bounce. They say it's a game of inches, and watch this one. It's deflected off the upright and stays and goes through. So the heavens were with Bob Thomas, number 16, and he says, he leans, he leans, he leans. He says, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so a close game is even closer. Pitch out and out of Bell on first down. Bell running hard. And Bell close to a first down on the play. Mike Spivey finally stopped him, and it looked like he might have got first down yardage. Oakland in front of Denver, 7 to nothing. First period. The Rams lead St. Louis, 7 0 on a touchdown run by Cullen Bryant. Buffalo really opening up on the Baltimore Colts. Just short of the first down. Less than a yard to go on a good hard run by Ricky Bell. 10 to 6 Buccaneers lead the Bears. Time winding down third period. Eckwood. Eckwood trying to get outside. Can't do it again. Fensick, number 45, putting the tackle on him. Coming up from the safety spot. Gary Fensick comes up with a lot of key tackles for the Chicago Bears. And he's one of those lucky players who is playing in his own hometown. You know, probably the greatest break a football player can get is to be born and raised and go to college and come back and play pro in your hometown. He's from Barrington, Illinois, right here, a suburb of Chicago. He went to Yale. Free agent signed in 1976. Eckwood got the first down yardage, and Fensick prevented it from being a whole lot more. Buccaneers on the move again. Good play. Intended for Gordon Jones. He couldn't hold on as Williams really drilled it. A little play action. That was kind of a nifty play, Tim. The fake of the pitch out, then the, just a quick post. And it was almost complete. If he'd have caught that in stride, he might have been gone. Eckwood, by the way, has now carried 15 times for 102 yards. He opened the season as a rookie going for more than 100 yards. Came into this game with 332. Good for fifth spot in the NFC. Second down. Nowhere to go for Ricky Bell. We'll make it Eckwood. Eckwood again. Page and Heron. Stopping him right at the line of scrimmage, and it may be a little loss. Let's see where they spot it. Loss of about a half a yard, bringing up third down. Jones brings in the play for Tampa Bay. And there's Alan Page, number 82, who sniffed that one out right from the very beginning and had no chance because he uh, was not fooled. Gordon Jones is wide right. Hagan's wide left. For Hagens, he's open. First down to the 41 yard line. Doug Plank on the tackle. Boy, what a rifle game. arm he has, huh, Tim? Really? It's a rifle arm as he goes back. Hagens down and in. 
on the simple sponge pattern. And you'll see, you'll notice number 88, Giles, was wide open on the inside of him. They had two receivers there. Both of them were pretty open. There was Giles, 88, and there's Higgins making the grab. And finally, up comes Doug Plank for the tackle. Tampa Bay on the move again. The ball at the Bears' 46-yard line. Bucks lead 10 to 6. In motion is Morris Owens behind the ball. Eckwood tries the right side, gets a block. Tom Hicks forces him out of bounds at the 40-yard line, a pickup of six yards for Jerry Eckwood. Jimmy Giles with the lead block on the play on the corner. A former Oklahoma Hopeman man was out there too, Greg Roberts, number 61. He pulled out and was really on the move there, which helped that play be a success. As you look at the score right now, Tampa 10, Chicago 6, actually Tampa Bay. Last time these teams met, last November, Bears won 14 to 3 here at Chicago Stadium. In the overall series, the Bears have won two and the Bucks have won one. The motion is Jones. Eckwood, right ahead, met by Muckensturm and pulled down at the ankles by Alan Page. Short of the first down, he gained about three yards on the play. They seem to be going more and more to the I formation now. Eckwood's running out of that I to hope to give him a little bit of running room, you might say. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Tampa Bay Buccaneers 10, the Chicago Bears 6. We pause now for a word from your local station. 7-3 in the first period of their game. Oakland in front of Denver, 7-6 in the second. Buffalo way out in front of Baltimore. Third in the yard to go here. The Buccaneers leading by four points. Trying to drive deeper into Chicago territory. Bell in motion. Pitch come out on, to Eckwood. Cuts behind his blocker, Bell, but the Bears cover extremely well. Hampton, the rookie number 99, doing the job on the left defensive end, and Doug Plank coming up from safety. Hampton may be having his best game as a Chicago Bear. He has got to learn to pass for us. They've been working with him quite a bit because he just hasn't had that much experience at it, but he's been strong against the run game, and his pass rush has improved. It's a fourth down situation for Tampa Bay at the Bear. 38-yard line, so they're not going to uh, give it a try. I guess they're going to punt unless they're going to surprise everybody here. Tampa leading statistically by a considerable margin as we look at Steve Schubert. 157 yards rushing through three quarters, 141 passing. 73 rushing, 73 passing for the Bears. But there's only a four-point difference on the scoreboard. A low snap. Blanchard, good effort, good kick. Gets it into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and I'm sure he would like to have had some more time to try to angle it, Johnny, but he made a very good effort fielding that ball and getting it away. Here's another look at it as the snap came a little low, but he was able to scoop it up like a shortstop and get it off, which did ruin his efficiency as putting it out of the corner because they only netted 18 yards out of it. They were on the 38, and the Bears have a first down at the 20-yard line. Uh, knowing John McKay, I'm kind of surprised at the 38 that he might not have gone for it, but I guess he going to depend on the strength of his defense, which has carried him for the last uh, couple of three years. It's been the strongest part of their game. Well, and the Bears have only got uh, two field goals. Remember, NBA action Friday, October 12th, the Lakers and the Clippers. Jabbar against Walton and the first network appearance of Magic Johnson. Richards in motion and the pitch out to Peyton. Peyton cutting back inside the right corner and picking up about three yards before being pulled down by Jaros White. Number 45. It is second and seven, a gain of three for Peyton. You can tell that Peyton is carrying his left arm just a little bit gingerly compared to his right arm. It doesn't swing as he walks. And obviously it has uh, affected his, his uh, mobility a little bit. As you see, he's moved past Bill Brown as the NFL's 18th all-time rusher. He is going on 5,900 yards, and he's only in his fifth year in the NFL. How about that? Great, great performer. Second down. Bears trying to get it going here. They go to Peyton again. He's got a blocker in front of him and a good defensive effort by Richard Wood diving for an ankle tackle just as Peyton was about to turn it upfield. He got about three as it was and it'll bring up third down at about two. Okay, here it is, the quick pitch as Peyton goes to the outside. Looked like he might have some uh, some running room here. Notice how he carries that ball as Vince takes a look at him. 
Now he'll switch it. Usually he'll switch right to the left side just before he's getting hit, but that time he did not. So he does not want to carry with his left arm that much. Third down, less than two to go. Oh, Robin Earl is stacked up short of the first down. Polar number 77. Number 58, Dewey Selman. And now you know why John McKay chose to punt, because he was depending on the defense, and the defense did a job for him. They sure did, and uh, now the Bears will have to punt. Natives getting a little restless at Soldier Field, but there is a long way to go. 12-20 remaining in regulation time. It is just a four-point margin, 10-6. Two outstanding defensive clubs really doing a job today. Parsons, high punt. Danny Reese, and even that one, he didn't try the fair catch on. I mean, Lenny Walterscheid was practically in his pocket along with Brian Bashnagel, and <laughs> he got the ball anyway. So it'll be first down at the 32-yard line when play resumes in a moment. Americans are learning that if their car's plugs are misfiring, a tune-up with new AC spark plugs can help improve gas mileage. Thanks, AC. Now is the time to tune up because AC Delco is making it possible for you to get eight AC spark plugs for the price of seven. Thanks, AC. Tune up with AC. Buy seven. Get with three. Thanks, AC. Selling an insurance policy is one thing, but giving you good service is another, and State Farm agents can do that. Whether it's your life, health, home, or car insurance, the information you need is right at our fingertips. If you have a claim, your agent will get it started for you. Fast, friendly, good neighbor service. That's State Farm. For your life, your health, your home, and your car, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here. Let's see that punt return again. Now, Lenny Walderscheid, number 23, could have really crucified him on this play, but he's being blocked, and, you know, he may have lost sight of the receiver sometimes, and sometimes you're not quite so sure whether he fair caught or not, but once you determine it, then you go ahead and make the tackle, but uh, I'll tell you, he's got a lot of guts, that Reese, doesn't he? He sure does. He doesn't uh, know about uh, the fair catch. I don't think anybody told him. First down, Tampa Bay in motion comes on. Back toward the ball. They go back behind him, a pitch out to Bell. Bell got just a couple before he swarmed under over there by a pack of bears. Before the game, speaking of a pack of bears, they introduced Dick Butkus, who went into the Hall of Fame at Canton this year, received his Hall of Fame ring in a pregame ceremony, the great former Bears linebacker. And we welcome back uh, George Hallis, Papa Bear, who's in the hospital not too long ago and is out and healthy as usual here at the game today. And he's going to have homecoming for all the old Bears tonight, so it's a big night in Chicago for ex-Chicago Bears. A lot of great, famous old Bears attending the game today. Second down and eight. Swing oh. pass out to Bell, can't hang on. Bell tried to haul it in with one hand, never got two on it. And it'll be third down. Tom Hicks out there on the coverage, but he had room to catch it. That's a good play. They have worked that with Equit a couple of times. They don't really swing their back way out in the flat. They just bring him out, but not straight up the field, kind of in between. They cut the difference. And so he catches it in full stride on his way downfield, and they have had some success with that play in this ball game. They'll probably come up with it again. Third down. See what they can do here. Three, four in against them defensively. They've got extra linebackers and defensive backs in. Williams for Hagen. Intercepted Wallerscheid. No, incomplete. The official wait on the play ruled that the ball touched the ground. And Wallerscheid does not get his interception. It was intended for Hagen's badly overthrown. Good coverage downfield by the Bears because Williams couldn't find anybody to throw to. He had to pump a couple of times here. Finally, he threw in desperation, and it was not accurate. It was overthrown right there. And let's see if he did indeed trap the ball. Very hard to tell. Very hard to tell. But the officials ruled he trapped it. The Tampa Bay will punt. So Blanchard will punt as the Bears defense rises up and stops the Bucks. Blanchard hits from his 25. 
The short punt taken at the 35-yard line by Lenny Walterscheid. And the Bears have pretty good field position here. And remember, they trail by only four points. We have 11 4 remaining in the fourth quarter. 10-6, Tampa Bay. And now, a highlight of the incredible Ford factory tour. Incredible developments in our search for good performance, better mileage, and low emissions. We're working on a ceramic gas turbine engine that'll get at least 30% better mileage than a conventional engine of the same size. Buddy, I'd call that incredible. I would. We're experimenting with battery power. Uh, for instance, this hybrid vehicle. Over 20 miles per hour, it runs on gas. Under 20, runs on electric. Oh, that's even more incredible. Is there such a word as incredible-er? Ford is even working on an engine that gets mileage like a diesel, but runs a lot cleaner. Is there anything more incredible than incredible? <laughs> yes, our little four-cylinder Mustang. It accelerates like some cars with eight-cylinder engines because it's turbocharged. Friends, I guess there's only one way left to express our basic emotions. Ford, that's Incredible. To take the incredible Ford factory tour, write us for information. Coming next, it's the World Series of Golf. The best of world-class players shoot for the title in the World Series of Golf. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Immediately following our football telecast, we'll go to Akron, Ohio for the World Series of Golf. Larry Nelson, the leader, but look who's lurking behind. Along with Bill Rogers, there is Tom Watson. First down for the Bears. 11.04 remaining. Latta brought the play in for Neil Armstrong. Earl and Peyton the running back. Vince Evans the quarterback. Play action. Screen pass. Peyton running hard. Peyton's got room. Peyton diving. Touchdown. Waller Peyton. Waller Peyton. Taking Jarris White with him. The last five yards through the air. Got a good block from Golden Richards. 65 yards to the score. A perfect screen pass as Walter Payton does the job. A tight formation there with Scott in. He clears the zone. And here comes Payton out behind his offensive lineman. Good blocking at the point of attack, and then Peyton turns on the speed. It looked like he had it, had it, uh, had him trapped her for a moment. Carries it with one hand, gets through the hole, turns on the speed. Good block by Golden Richards downfield. You'll see him out in front, and then Peyton just dives. He started to cut back, and then decided, I'm going to fly the rest away from the five-yard on line. On he flew five yards into the end zone for the touchdown. Thomas for the point after. It's good. And so the Chicago Bears, who have been hibernating for most of this football game offensively, have got themselves in front. With 10.50 to go regulation time, the Bears 13 and the Buccaneers 10. The arm is going up and down, up and down. A lot of people would drop the ball, but not Walter. And then this last five yards is really beautiful for anybody, even if you're a Tampa Bay rooter, as Golden Richards is out front, and Peyton takes off from the five and flies in for the touchdown. And there he is, sweetness, they call him. Noah Jackson says, nice job. All right, Thomas will kick it off. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here at Soldier Field. A low bouncing kick is taken by the linebacker, Dana Nafziger. Nafziger does a good job getting up over the 45 to the 46 yard line, and the Bucks start with good field position. Johnny, what do you think? Were they trying to stay away from the return, or did he just miss kick it? I think they just didn't want to take a chance on. Uh, I don't. I'm sure he didn't miss kick it. They just didn't want anybody to get a full head of steam. Now. The Bears have not blitzed all that much in this game. There it is, another one-play drive, 65 yards, this time by Chicago. We might see a little bit more blitzing because Williams hasn't seen too much of it in this game. Spivey continues at the corner for Terry Smith, who suffered an injury earlier in the game with his elbow. Ricky Bell straight ahead, running hard, picks up about seven. Hampton and Hicks, the linebacker, 99 and 54 on the tackle. Good hard run by Bell behind Greg Roberts in the center, Steve Wilson. You go back to that field goal attempt by O'Donohue that uh, when they hit the upright, turns out to be a very big one-inch miss there. 
Well, it was a big one-inch uh, good one for Bob Thomas, too. 10-14 <laughs> to go at his second, and a little more than three. In motion back to the ball, Jones. Eckwood. Close to the first down, but not quite there. He'll have less than a yard to go. Osborne made the tackle, number 68. Williams signaling over to John McKay that uh, less than a yard to go. Rideout comes in defensively for the Bears. to give them five down linemen. The linebacker Campbell comes out on the third and short. Eckwood goes out for the Buccaneers, and Obradovich is in double tight. Two tight ends in for Tampa Bay. Bell has the first down. Fensick hits him. But the Bucks keep it going, and they're in Bears territory at the 44-yard line. 9-17 remaining in the fourth quarter. There is the sophomore pro, Doug Williams, from Grambling, 6'4", 215 pounds. Their number one pick a year ago. They don't roll him out so much as uh, they used to. Last year, the Tampa Bay beat Chicago on Doug Williams rolling out and throwing on the run. That's because he had to to save his skin. <laughs> <laughs> They've got some more protection. First down, Tampa Bay. Ricky Bell, the lead back, and good running by Bell. He had a good hole behind Greg Horton and the center, Wilson. Then he exploded through two Bear defenders and has a first down. Spivey and Hicks finally got him down. Some good power running by Bell as he comes back and watch him collide with 58 is in there. And then he just turns it on, breaks out of their grabs, and they were just dragging. Tom Hicks, number 54, dragged him down. Ricky Bell wanted that yardage. Boy, that Hicks is uh, not easy to drag at 6'4", 235. He's a strong guy, pumps a lot of iron. First down, the Bucks on the move now at the 31 of Chicago. Eckwood. Eckwood cannot break the tackle. It was Campbell and Hicks, the linebackers, combining on him, 59 and 54. He got maybe a yard. Now they're going to give him a little more. Let's call it a two-yard gain, second and eight. Kansas City in front of Seattle, 7 to 3. The Chiefs coming alive the last couple of weeks. Marv Levy's squad uh, doing a whole lot of rebuilding. Rookie quarterback, Fuller. Seattle been struggling a bit. Figured to be doing better this year. Second and eight. The motion is on. Eckwood taking it outside. Drags one tackler, Hartenstein, and picked up about three more yards on the play to make it third and five before Fensick finally stopped him. He came very close to breaking that one. You know, it's ironic, you know, Tampa Bay controlled that first half a couple, three times they came so close to scoring, uh, breaking the game open. They settled for that uh, seven-point lead at the half, and now they cannot afford a mistake. Osborne out, extra linebacker in. Third and five. A little less than five for the first down. Williams, sideliner, complete. Did he have it inbound? Yes, he did. Gordon Jones, the rookie wide receiver from Pittsburgh. Spivey on the coverage. That was very close to not being totally in control inbound. It is a first down at the 16. An excellent pass protection. Williams had plenty of time to throw the ball. Didn't use his body. He went up with his hands, and he oh. had control. I believe he did have control. Well, it was very close. And the official was right at the sideline, and the Bucks keep it alive, and that's all that's official at this point. 13 to 10, the Bears lead. 6.39 to go in the fourth period. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris. As this game has really picked up the tempo here in this fourth quarter. Ricky Bell. Ricky Bell off tackle. Batters his way for about five, maybe six yards. And they sure run a lot of pitches, don't they? They've got Johnny Davis in there to help lead on the blocking. Gary Fensick made the tackle again. He's been a busy man against the run in the Bears secondary. We'll call it about a five-yard gain, just a little under that, it would appear, from the marker. John McKay keeping the sun off his head with that hat. 
calling the play. High formation. Davis, number 38, the lead back. Davis, the ball carrier, straight ahead. Short of the first down. Picked up maybe four yards before being thrown back. Allen Page, the tackle number 82. Main man on the play. Hampton was there. Helping out. Neil Armstrong, the Bears coach. Hoping for his defense to make the big play here on third and about two. And now the decision for John McKay. If he's going to go for it twice, he runs twice into the line. Is he going to take the risk on the pass, go for the touchdown, and then settle for the field goal? That's his decision. He trails by three. He's got Davis out on Eckwood back in. Two wide receivers. Wide right, Hagan. Wide left, Owen. Williams will throw. Pump once. He's got him open. Touchdown. Oh. Hagan over Spivey. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers go back in front. And Doug Williams showing his enormous poise very coolly found the open man. That's the play they wanted. And was he open? Yes, he was. He went down on the flag, went in on the quick goal, and then turned to the outside. You notice the pump by Williams, and he was wide open as he beat Spivey. Spivey was going to the inside, and of course, Spivey hasn't been playing that much on the corner. He's replaced uh, Terry Schmidt, who was injured earlier in the game. Now, this here is a big point, a very big point, extra point. It's 16-13 right now. Neil O'Donohue with Blanchard holding. And it's good. And so the... Well, flag down. Is there a flag down on the play? Flag or a towel? Doesn't look like it's a flag. Just a towel. All right. And so it is 17 to 13 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 5.07 to go regulation time. Bay. 54 yards and 10 plays using up 5.43 on the clock, culminating in the touchdown pass from eight yards out to Hagan. And a 17 to 13 lead. Back to the four point margin. O'Donohue's kickoff taken by Ricky Watts. Watts gets to the 20 yard line, met there by three or four Tampa Bay tacklers. Or by uh, three or four of the Bucks uh, trying to take that ball away from him. Well, here's an interesting statistic, John. The Bucks came into the game with the poorest third down offense in the entire NFL. They came in at 24%, 15 of 62. But today, they're 10 of 19 on third down. And in a couple of key situations, particularly the last one, they kept the drive alive with third down conversions. Bell has rushed for 48 yards. Eckwood for 118 yards for Tampa Bay. First down, Bear. Let's see what they can get going here. Evans complete and immediately Peyton is hit by Cecil Johnson by a Dewey Selman number 58. I think they'll be looking for Walter out of that backfield for the rest of this game. Five yard gain to Peyton. Latta brings the play in. Cobb comes to the Bears sidelines. Williams is 14 for 31 168 yards. One touchdown, one interception. That came in the end zone on the final play of the first half. They're not going to let Scott stay man for man out here. Richards in motion. They haven't thrown to him all day. They go to Peyton out of the backfield. He has the first down. Walter Peyton, Richard Wood stopped him out at the 35-yard line. Now let's correct our interceptions on Williams. He has had two interceptions. Livers picked off another one. They're going to have to watch for Walter out of the backfield because, like with some, a lot of other teams, you let the big fullbacks or average backs catch it out of the backfield. You can get these good linebackers who can stop him for two and three yard gains. But Peyton is so elusive and so explosive that they're going to have to start worrying about playing him inside outside with the linebackers coming out of the backfield. Somebody waiting for him specifically, or the Bears could go right down the field. And Dewey Selman being helped to the sidelines over there. Holding his left arm, it appears. Aaron Brown, number 55, has come in to replace him at left inside linebacker. Don't forget 60 minutes tonight. Fidel Castro talks with Dan Rather. In motion is the tight end, Latta. And Evans uh -oh. in traffic, loose ball, and a rule. 
a face mask. Tillman was in there, number 63. And the play was called before the ball came loose, evidently. Walter Payton having quite a day as usual, 88 yards via the pass route. He's rushed for 46 yards. Did you see Noah Jackson pick up the hanky for the official? That was nice of him. He wouldn't have if the penalty had been against the Bears. You can bet on that. <laughs> it is against the Buccaneers. Let's hear referee Gordon McCarter. Face mask, number 60, defense. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, it's against again. Walter Wally Chambers as Peyton was wide open over the middle again. Here comes Chambers from the outside as Evans tries to... Well, I didn't pick it up, did you? Well, that's why the ball came loose. Yeah, he grabbed him by the mask as he had his arm up oh. and pulled him around, and uh, that caused Evans to drop the ball. Evans back to pass. He's got Golden Richards open. Richards out of bounds at the 38, a gain of about seven on the play. First pass today to Golden Richards. Second down, three yards to go for a first down. 3.29 to play. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris, we've got a thrilling finish here with the Buccaneers leading by four. And they have to wait for the play to come in from Greg Latta, but that's no fun for the receivers because what's fun is when you can stand next to the quarterback and say, I can do this, I can do that. <laughs> you can call your own plays, but now they send them in and it ruins the whole game. <laughs> Spoken like a wide receiver, Johnny. They're in the pro set. Richards in motion behind the ball. Vince Evans, number rated quarterback. Up the middle for Richards, intercepted. Cedric Brown, number 34, dropped immediately, but he made an outstanding interception. Richards is still down as he took the collision from Brown and just stole that ball. Big defensive play for the Bucks with 3.21 to go. Well, he's their man down there, that free man, and he kept his eyes open, came up, and helped out on the on the pass defense and made the interception. He hasn't had all that many interceptions this year, but he's knocked a lot of passes down. As Evans waited, waited, finally throws the ball, and look at that, he comes up, he's the second man helping out. Nice play by Cedric Brown. His first interception of the season, but as you pointed out, he's been in the thick of knocking a lot of balls away, and he is a good ball hawk. Next week, on our NFL coverage, Chicago at Buffalo, Detroit at New England, Green Bay at Atlanta, Philadelphia will be at Washington. Tampa Bay will be at the Giants. St. Louis at Houston. Those are our first games. And the doubleheader games, Dallas at Minnesota, Los Angeles at New Orleans. Check your local listings for the games and times in your area. Buccaneer ball. And they are in command now. The Bears have to get the ball back immediately. Johnny Davis carrying it for the first time. Muckenstern made the tackle. Gain of about two. Baltimore has scored in their game against Buffalo, but they're still well behind. Next week, Johnny and I will be in Buffalo for the high-scoring Bills against the Chicago Bears. 17 to 13 here at Soldier Field. Brilliant sunshine all day. Johnny Davis again. Davis picks up a couple of more. Four being swarmed down by the right side of the Bears defensive line. Davis, the second-year man from Alabama. Number two pick a year ago behind Doug Williams. Third down, about five. Hampton, the man to stop him. The Bears have used one of their timeouts because I guess they're trying to take advantage of the two-minute warning, too. It's 2.27 left on the clock. They are now down to two timeouts. Tampa Bay will have a third and five or six, which is an interesting situation. Will they try to pass and garner that first down, or will John McKay go conservative and run the ball and try and wind it down to the two-minute warning? He's over there now with Doug Williams uh, mapping this play out. Looks like he's drawing a few lines. Maybe they'll bring up a new play. Something. <laughs> well, he can certainly do it if he wants to. He's the boss, right? That's right. <laughs> Monday night on CBS, uh, quite a lineup as usual, starting with White Shadow. And you can find out why Reese wants to quit the team. Don't do that, Reese. 
And on Nash, Hawkeye gets caught between a wounded civilian and a military interrogator. Have you ever been caught between a wounded civilian and a military interrogator? I want to find out what that's all about. Then a special showing of The Last Resort, followed by Lou Grant. That's all on CBS Monday night. Bell and Eckwood are the running backs. Third and five. The Bucks want to keep the ball here and use up the rest of the time in this game. Eckwood behind Bell. Eckwood cannot get to the first down. Good defensive play. Virgil Livers was there, number 24. Tom Hicks and Lenny Walterscheid all getting in on that one. That was a big play for the Bears. Brings up fourth down. These two teams defensively have been very, very solid today. We've had two long runs for touchdowns. Otherwise, uh, the offenses have been closed down completely. Another timeout on the field with the two-minute warning. The Buccaneers lead it 17 to 13. Two rays out there today. Here it is, almost October, and nice sunny day for the girls. Two minutes to play in the game. Steve Schubert awaiting the punt from Tom Blanchard. Blanchard at the 45-yard line of the Buccaneers. The league's toughest defense against the rush will be seeing some aerial work when the Bears get the ball with two minutes to go. Another low snap, another good job by Blanchard. Schubert's going to let it go in. It does, and the Bears will start from their 20 on a touchback. And they have one minute, 53 seconds to score not a field goal, but a touchdown. They're four points down. They got to go for the for the big score. Well, they have had the opportunity to figure out the strategy for the final two minutes. Neil Armstrong and his offensive coordinators, Kenny Myers upstairs. Vince Evans is ready. Let's see if the Bears can move it against this tough, tough Buccaneer defense. Well, the Bucks will probably give them those short passes and give them five, ten yards a clip. It just depends whether they can get all the way down the field. First down from the 20. Richards in motion. Flag down. Evans for oh. in intercepted by Jarris White, intended for Bashnagel. Earl pulls him down. Now let's see who the flag is against. Jarris White on the interception, a bad pass or a bad route. The penalty against the Bears for illegal motion. Let's see it again. The wide receiver down at the bottom of your screen, I think that's uh, James, uh, James Scott. James Scott Illegal moved motion. too soon. They had two minute Number motion, and he threw the ball way overthrown. Decline. And there was the e First easy down, interception Jarris White. by Jarris White. And that could be the old ball game. What a way. That's really a downer for the Chicago Bears as Robin Earl makes the tackle. But they had two men in motion at the same time. It was James Scott for being illegally in motion, as Johnny described it. Richards was legally in motion, and Scott left early. Bashnagel appeared to be running that route correctly, and uh, at this moment, we'd have to say Evans overthrew it. Bell for the Bucks, bashing his way for five, maybe six yards, down to the 36-yard line as these Buccaneers show continued maturity and poise. Campbell and Muckenster made the tackle for Chicago. And we are looking at the only undefeated team left in the National Football League and the only undefeated coach, John McKay. They'll be 5-0 and in the Central Division. In front of McKay is Bill Nelson, their quarterback coach, offensive strategist with Kenny Meyer. And with a timeout on the field, it is second and five, and the Bucks lead it by four. Well, I think I included Kenny Meyer on the coaching staff of the Bucks. Of course, he's with the Bears. Apologies to all concerned. Second down, Tampa Bay. And Johnny Davis. Oh, what a pop he takes right at the line of scrimmage. Still scrapping, but play had been called. And he got maybe a yard. Third down for the Buccaneers. 119 on the clock. Tampa Bay, John McKay, Bill Nelson down there, giving the play to Morris Owens, number 85, to bring in. Third down and three. Remember, the World Series of Golf follows immediately here on CBS. Don't the Bears have a timeout left? Boy, I'd sure take it now, stop that clock, and then worry about stopping it other ways later on. But they let him roll off 30 seconds right there. 
Williams brings out the Bucks. Big hole for Bell. Bell has first down at the 30-yard line of the Chicago Bears, and that is going to wind it up. First down for Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay is going to win their fifth consecutive game without a defeat. They are handily atop the Central Division of the National Football Conference. And the Bears in Detroit, and Minnesota, and Green Bay will do all of the chasing the rest of the way as time ticks away here at Soldier Field. And we'd like to uh, thank our producer, Bill Barnes, director John McDonough, the fine technical crew from WBBM in Chicago for another outstanding job here this afternoon. And that is it. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have won it 17 to 13 to go 5 and 0 oh as McKay hustles off. The Bears fall to 2 and 3, and Walter Payton and Doug Williams shaking hands down there. Two fine athletes who have had a fine day today. Tampa Bay 17, Chicago 13. Tampa Bay now the only unbeaten team in the National Football League. Walter Payton with an exciting touchdown run to his credit, 65 yards on a screen pass. Jerry